Hi, welcome to episode number 31 of my vlog. Uh, this is a vlog kind of detailing how I'm hopefully going to try and achieve a uh, double body weight back squat uh, 12 months after the opening of gyms after lockdown last year. So uh, last week I talked a bit about uh, some of the biomechanics behind uh, the program design um, for this particular phase, about five, six week block. After Christmas, uh, looking at front squats as, um, as a kind of alternative to back squats for this particular phase. And look at some assistance lifts about how to um, strengthen uh, some of the core really to resist some of the kind of destabilizing forces in a back squat. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about that last week, uh, this week, because that was kind of covered last week. So I'll just talk a bit about some progress and uh, some other uh, change and tweaks are made um, to, to this kind of uh, phase of training. So um, looking at some, some data, a little bit of data. Uh, Here's um, the front squats basically progress so far. So the first uh, week, uh, last week was, it was a bit of a, uh, a shortened week. So I call that a prep week. Um, and it was important that I did that actually because um, having not done front squats for, for a good period of time, it, it took a couple of sessions just to get back in the groove of doing them uh, and doing them heavily. Um, so realistically, that's kind of only started this week. So this is week one of, of the new program proper. Um, and actually what, what's kind of been really pleasing so far is probably seen a bit of a, a skill development thing as opposed to changing in strength. But as you can see there, um, relatively a good progression in, in, in terms of velocity. Um, so five reps are 85. That's going to be the constant in the program. Um, I'm always going to start off with five reps of 85 and it'll be the other lows that, that will progress in, in either load or volume. So I've gone from... Uh, not 0.6 in, in the first session to 0.65. That's over five reps. That's a reasonable amount of, of, of increase. Um, in the first session that I did, I couldn't do any more than 100, 110. Um, then I was able to kind of up a little bit to 105, but I couldn't do any more than 110 in the first week. And and that was at not 0.25, which is around that kind of 1RM uh, rep, uh, velocity. But if you look at the data again this week, um, was able to jump up to, to 115 and at 0.33 then 0.35. So that's that's definitely um, sub-maximal. It's close to maximum, don't get me wrong, it's not a million miles away, but uh, that's kind of like a 9 out of 10 intensity as opposed to like 10 out of 10 um, flat out. So um, if that continues to, to improve, um, it's not going to kind of continue to improve at that rate, but um, if I start to push up towards 4... Um, 0.4 meters per second I'd be really kind of happy with that um, so this week he's just doing a single repetition of um, of 115 and then uh, doubles and then triples and fours and five so it, it's the uh, amount of volume I'm going to do at that load that's going to be the, the marker of success but again um, following on from that first, that first attempt at front squats that's definitely uh, pleasing progress the Last thing um, I'm going to talk about today is a relatively um, short, sharp one. It's kind of going to, to the monitoring that I've been using. So that's that's the main thing I've been looking at in terms of like squat velocity. Um, so in a couple of weeks' time, I'll do a back squat um, load velocity profile to see if that's made any difference to uh, back squat performance. But on other things I've been looking at is again being by a bit of a biomechanist and, and, and sports scientists like to track things and, and th check things are improving is that I was looking at um, peak power uh, and this is what the um, three rep counting movement jump looked like and it was really frenetic it was chaotic um, and I'll be honest with you it didn't really help in any way and it, it showed there that I had some kind of crazy improvement development and and actually, that's not what was born out in, in what I was squatting. So according to that, I got massively better at, it, at producing power. Uh, but I wasn't really getting any better at, at, um, at squatting. And actually, I don't really feel like I got that much more powerful, really. I got better, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't think that picture really represented true uh, change. So what I've done this time round is gone to uh, a three-rep um, monitoring system using either a... 50 kilo snatch or 70 kilo, 70 kilo clean. So both reps I can do um, from a power point of view. Um, very rarely would, 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 I, would I miss those reps. So it's, it's, it's a relatively safe um, load. And as you can see there already, um, it, it's much, much more stable. Um, that's a rolling average, so it should smooth things out. Um, but what I've used it for the rolling average is looking at trends as opposed to individual isolated days. So... Um, 
relatively stable, uh, but I've not been doing it for that long, so I wouldn't expect to see a huge uh, change. And I'm not tra training these either, so I'm not hoping for big changes in these. But yeah, as I get get stronger and, and get uh, hopefully that transfers to more power, and, and this is a more meaningful way of tracking that, I hope. Now, I just said that's that's looking at trends. What I'm also using this for as a way of hopefully um, looking at daily readiness to, to train. Um, so what I've got here is um, calculating what's happening on a daily basis. That gives me a mean for the, for the day, and that goes into my monitoring system. And then um, the next row down is overall mean. So that's all the data points I've collected across um, all the different sessions. Uh, and then I look at um, this value on the bottom row is overall minus smallest measurable difference or, or not point two standard deviations. That gives me the lowest tolerable um, output. Um, what, what's, the, what's the worst performance I'm, I'm going to allow to continue to train normally? What that basically means is I've got a bit of a, a, a minimum threshold that if I fall below that, I means I'm not particularly um, capable of generating forces on that particular day. And that might help me be a bit more intuitive about trying to train in a particular day. So if I drop below that level, that means on that particular day, I'm only going to do the minimum volume for that day. So that's going to go to a 531 for all lifts um, and just kind of have a, a, a minimal dose effect for that particular session that particular day. So hopefully, um, with it being a bit more stable as a measure, um, a bit less chaotic, and a bit obviously a lot less noisy. I should be a bit more informed about the information. So I can simply write down, using that particular sheet, what that number looks like on any particular week. And if at the beginning of the session, I fall below that particular number, the decision's taken for me, I'm gonna do less um, less volume on that day. Try and maintain the intensity, because the intensity is the key thing. So trying to still hit the, the heavy numbers, but for, for a lot, lot less repetitions and a lot less sets. And hopefully I can just keep on, keep on keeping on, basically. So that that's kind of the the strategy. So yeah, just into week one proper of the training program. So not huge amounts of, of, of things to say. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of couple of weeks I'll be able to report back on body comp and, and hopefully that's um, less shit than it was, <laughs> uh, less look, looking like Christmas, um, but and uh, hopefully some uh, more progress on front squats and that's going to transfer to back squats.